Suck it, nerd. How's it going, guys? It is Ventral Shadows here, and we're bringing you a quick, quick video about how Max C and Nibiru are healthy for the game, all right? And, uh, no copium. I'm just really, really happy about their performance, okay? So Max C is the great equalizer in the card game, and especially right now in Master Duels, okay? And Nibiru is definitely the partner in crime to that, okay? And it's kind of interesting because before this format with Master Duel, we definitely have never seen Nibiru and Maxi in over the TCG together, okay? So I'm pretty sure OCG got to experience that a lot, while the TCG players have never got to do that at all, okay? And with so many people running special summon spam decks that build up kind of like a bunch of negates that the opponent is unable to play through, and it's even impossible sometimes for going second to compete without the perfect hand, and even with the perfect hand, half of it gets negated, okay? And with that being so prevalent in the format right now, I think it's really optimal having Max C available to you as a player, okay? And again, it's not just Max C, it is also Nibiru, okay? Because even with simply opening Max C, you're not guaranteed a board break even with card advantage, but drawing into a Nibiru halfway through the opponent's combo, being able to break their board and then still have resources to perform your term are very optimal, okay? And, uh... They're pretty expensive to craft in the game itself for Master Duels, but uh, it's going to be worth it. Even if you see, I still need to get my 3 Nibiru because Ultra Rares are kind of expensive. But as I cr uh, climb up in the ladders, it's going to be something pretty needed. And it's nice, though, to have access to that, okay? And Maxi has definitely been the anti-monster spam, like, since it came out. Uh, when it was first printed, it kind of, like took a little game i think it was like the next event that came out after maxi's uh printing is when someone kind of main three and realized well i draw a bunch of cards when my opponent goes crazy and then on my immediate turn i have so much resources i can just immediately otk or just set up whatever i need and win the game all right and on top of that like even after it got limited and then banned we've seen the sky or the uh prices of it kind of skyrocket over time okay so even with it being banned, it still has kind of a sway on like the meta and how people like think about the meta game overall. And every time a ban list season comes up or we're about to go into a ban list season comes up, debates always spark of if it's able to come back or not. So I don't know. I think uh, Maxi being in Master Duel is a great little intro to people who have never been able to play Maxi before to see for themselves if they think it could actually come back to the TCG, which personally I think would be healthy for the game. Okay, we have Nibiru. But opening Nibiru in your like in your first turn hand going second doesn't always happen. And then like I said, opening Max C is nice because it can lead to things such as like Gamma, but Nibiru is gonna be kind of where we're sitting at, depending on the deck we're playing. But if they're summoning that much where the Max C is gonna be optimal, then the Nibiru will also be optimal as well. So that's kind of something we wanna like cover here. Now what are the decks that summon the most that this combo would be the strongest against that you're going to be playing against especially in master duel okay those decks right now we have a few the first one right now is a uh, tri brigade i didn't type it is tri brigade and those guys spam out a bunch of different forms of it because we got tri brigade and tri brigade zoo okay and with tri brigade they summon Lynx by uh, sending a bunch of cards to the grave, then banishing from the grave. So they'll Lynx summon out of the grave, okay? And to do that, it takes a few summons, and then sometimes they'll actually uh, summon one monster and Link with the one off the board, filling up the grave some more so they can trigger more effects. And then uh, when they go into the Zodiacs, uh, if you don't know much about the Zodiacs, they'll like overlay on top of each other multiple times, and they'll attack directly, and then they'll bring out a Zeus. So being able to hit into Maxi off of them, you're going to draw a bunch of cards and then definitely have an opening to Nibiru them. Um, the follow-up for some of these decks is okay. Like for Tri Brigade Zoo, they can have decent follow-up. The next one I would like to mention is Bird Up. And uh, so with the Bird Up, though, they're a basic Exceed deck that uh, overlay into uh, small monsters and attack directly. And then when they attack directly, they're actually able to go into the Zeus, okay? 
And a lot of the little uh, level one monsters just special summon themselves from the hand, special summon other monsters from the hand, and then special summon from the graveyard. So within a real quick uh, turn, they're going to summon five times. You're going to draw a bunch off Maxi and then be able to go into Nibiru. Hopefully before the Sky Thunder even hits the board. And even if it does hit the board, you can still like Nibiru it off. And since Sky Thunder is at one, you can clear it into the grave. And if they have the no way to bring it back that is definitely one of their best cards gone all right uh another deck is actually really good right now that we're kind of seeing play is the ad emancipator deck okay and this deck type it's a rock deck that excavates the top cards of their deck sending rocks or special summoning rocks and then they can basically spam out a board of all sorts and negates from things such as like the synchro they'll even link into appalooza they're going to all sorts of monsters because the types of levels they are attributes they are and everything being a wide variety they have a ton of cards they can actually go into as far as boss monsters are concerned that will do a large variety of interruption during the opponent's board so at emancipator is seeing more play as the time goes on because it is kind of a complicated deck i will say that um like the combo lines that you have to learn are like a wide variety of them like i said because of the different type of cards they are okay so maxi and nibiru in my opinion is definitely a staple against them because it's gonna be insane like those decks are just like i said becoming more prevalent as the uh format goes on after that, we definitely have the Dragon Link, and I'm just going to type in Dragon Link, because for those part, it actually pulls it up. And it's just a bunch of dragons that link. It is exactly what it sounds like. And over in the TCG, this was kind of the meta for the longest time. Finally, it kind of slowed down a little bit, but in Master Duel, we're going to be seeing it a lot. After the Dragon Link, we have things such as Pendulum, which, uh, as it sounds like, they Pendulum a bunch, and they normally go into a bunch of dragons or spellcasters that can uh, Link Summon and Exceed as well. We got Spiral, which basically stack the deck and special summon out a bunch of low-level monsters that can link up into a, in the gates like Appalooza, and that was huge in the TCG as well. <laughs> and then another deck that's actually really good right now is treasure panda ftk with exodium okay and when i play against this deck i'll be honest opening maxi is very nice because they special summon out a bunch of vanilla monsters and like the exodia pieces being able to send them to the grave drawing them and then add them back from the graveyard to the hand with like dark factory mass production so opening uh maxi into something like ash or even nibiru is pretty good against decks that even like just OTK with Exodia. So that's just kind of cool. Something neat to show you. So even against like decks like that, Maxi is still very strong. And so people might ask, like, why is it banned in the TCG? And that's because uh, Maxi has made a lot of haters in its time before it got banned, okay? And we actually have like the term like the Maxi Challenge. It's a little mini game that's become a thing in the middle of the duel when the opponent maxis and you are now set on your combo line. And it's like, do I proceed with the combo or do I stop? Okay. And that is the Maxi Challenge. And a lot of players just proceed with it because that's just the way their deck has to play. Okay. So I ask again, like, why do so many players hate the card that helps out a bunch of decks? That's because Yu-Gi-Oh players are hypocrites. Yes, that is correct. They're hypocrites, okay? And how so? They want to spend a ton of cash on a deck they themselves did not build, okay? And then they want to coin flip, go first. And then after they go first, they're going to summon a board full of negates and watch with glee while your opening hand, even if perfect, is unable to play against them, okay? Because you only have six cards. They're going to have a bunch of negates. And as you know, a bunch of these combo lines can actually generate more resources at the end of your board than what you started with. I mean, way more resources, okay? So, certain turns with certain boards, your opponent cannot play, okay? You are literally expected to sit there and lose with no fighting back, okay? Like, that's what the opponents actually expect you to do. All right, but rather it be with Skill Drain or Max C or Mystic Mine, okay? It is unacceptable for you, the opponent, all right, to interrupt them in any way. It is regarded as sacky, as lame, as low IQ and low tier, low skill, okay? To run a floodgate to prevent the uncontrollable rush of monsters that the opponent's decks actually play, all right? 
So like I said, you are literally expected to sit there and take the beating, all right? That's the mentality of the average meta player right now, okay? They just want you to sit there and be a free win. And if you play any floodgates or anything like that, you're sacking them, okay? That That's what they actually think, all right? Luckily for us, the players that like this, like actually playing the game and not just sitting there for 15 minutes knowing there's nothing that's going to happen unless you just surrender, all right? Luckily, Konami agrees that beating them is great and fun and interactive, okay? So, in this game, we have three max C. In the, nor in, like, in the normal game, we have three Mystic Mine still. People are up in arms about that. Like, they hate Mystic Mine. Because they don't play Spell Trap Killers. They don't play anything they can out it, okay? And then, so why do the bad kids get mad? Or I'm just going to call them bad kids. So why do the BKs get mad? BKs get mad because they like to think that skill is defined by straight lining it into like the enemy team. Like some sort of Call of Duty game. They want to just sprint in there with the submachine gun and start firing, okay? And anyone that outs them or drops the hand traps is sacking them. They're a camper. They're the guy camping in the corner. You're not allowed to do that. Your strategy is bad. Don't look at that person, okay? So that is kind of how they view the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. They see a Max C Nibiru and get angry because they're unwilling to stop from proceeding. Mainly because, like, that's the only thing their deck knows how to do. Or they're, that's the only thing they know how to do with the deck that they didn't build themselves is proceed. And they get, like I said, they get mad when they're unable to push forward. Okay? And they don't know any other way of victory because they didn't build the deck. Okay? Some... Higher end players would be like, all right, maxi challenge. I understand. I cannot proceed. I'm going to get in a beard. I'm going to get something out. Like, I'm not going to be able to OTK. I'm going first. They're going to out me. Okay. So, what do they do? All right. They go into things like Baguska that uh, tired to peer. Okay. And like, you have certain, we're going to call them rest points in their deck that if they get max seed or if an interruption starts happening where their main combo is not going to go off, you go into the side combo. You go into kind of a backup plan, a plan B, okay? Imagine having a plan B in a deck, all right? So like I said, a lot of players right now, they're just overlaying into Baguska and defense mode, and now they have kind of a mini floodgate for the opponent to have to out, okay? And it also forces decks to not, like, only be able to stop, but pick up, like, their engine later on, okay? So a lot of decks are, like, I, I call them line of code decks, where they just do one, two, three, four, five. A lot of people call this skillful, that's cool. Memorization is good. It gets you high grades in school, okay? But certain decks are literally like, if you interrupt that line of code, they lose. So you can call that what you want. And I think it's important that, like, in Yu-Gi-Oh! going forward, it, like, yeah, those line of code decks are cool. They're kind of glass cannon. But it's nice having decks that can stop and then pick up again on the following turn. Like, actually thinking about going into a turn three, you know? So, I think that's why things such as Max C and Nibiru comboing into a deck will make uh, players have to, like I said, have rest points in their deck to counter that play. As well as an engine that can pick up on a turn three, not just dedicate fully on the first turn, okay? And on top of that... Um, to be honest, uh, Maxi now, like with like the game we are in with Master Duel being a best of one, we are forced to play so many hand traps and outs in the primary deck that, um, you know, it's important to have one that covers the majority of them. So there are plenty of outs right now to Maxi that are actually very viable to main deck that are good outs to other cards aside from Maxi. And those are Ash Blossom, we got Call by the Grave, Cross Out Designator, and there's a variety of monster negates that if you're actually able to get them on the board before the C is activated or after the C is activated before the Nibiru gets into the hand, that's always like a very popular way to stop the Nibiru. Even if you can't stop the Maxi, you can potentially stop the Nibiru from coming down, okay? And as we said before, without the uh, correct outs and correct, you know, follow-up Maxi itself, yeah, it gets you a lot of cards, but against the correct board, it's not going to do anything the maxi itself will just give you that like the extra resources but if those resources don't punch through the wall they don't result in anything important so again though i just wanted to do a quick little video on how maxi is definitely definitely healthy for the metagame right now whether that be in master duel or if it were to come to the tcg and 
yeah, especially Maxi with Nibiru, I think is just going to be a super popular uh, going second out combo that we're going to be seeing going forward. And I hope to see that coming up as well in the TCG as said. All right, guys, so that's that quick video. Hopefully you liked it or didn't like it. That's completely cool if you didn't either. All right, you might hate the combo, but definitely leave some comments below on why you like it or hate it. Either way, I love it, and it'll be good to Max and Nibiru, all the meta bad kid players going forward. Okay, guys, have yourself a good night, and suck it, nerds.